Okay, so let's scrub through this again one more time. We have um, our logo fading in, and now we have our Team Ninja Gator text floating up and positioning itself right there. And let's do a really quick RAM preview. Uh, the way you do a RAM preview is by hitting zero on the numerical keypad. Um, if you hit zero, and it'll dump all the images into RAM. You can this green line here is uh, what's been rendered out, and uh, it usually reaches the end, but it's limited to your. It's limited only by your system. So I have an eight gig, uh, eight gigs of RAM on this computer, so it's pretty hefty, and it's a workstation computer with a pretty nice processor. But you can, um, it'll still chug sometimes. But this, the the great part about a RAM preview is it's real time. And so if we're playing it in real time, let's gonna start again. You see how that happens, and all the action happens. But we didn't. Uh, the RAM preview has a couple of problems with it, or not problems, just a little couple of uh, caveats with it. One thing is, once you RAM preview, it just goes through whatever is in here. But you can adjust the time of the RAM preview by working with uh, this bottom gray bar right here in your timeline. is is your work area, and you can shrink this by adjusting these little yellow, yellow bars. And whatever's in the yellow bars in your work area is what gets previewed in your RAM preview. So if you hit zero after you've made the adjustments on here, it'll just preview that part out. And you can move and adjust this as well, and the front part as well. It's really cool. It's a really nifty little feature. Um, and not only that, but RAM previews will also dump in sound as well. So while with on that note, let's drop in our music that we have in this video. Remember this music big and epic track that we have here. It's our intro perfect wave. We're going to bring that into our composition right now. Let's do that by dropping it in. We're going to drag it, click and drag, click and drag it in. So nice. And just like other layers that are on our composition, we can animate all the properties of our audio. We twirl down all the menus and you get to see what we get to work with. But, um... Yeah, so we have that right now. The waveform, let's hide you for now. And let's do another quick RAM preview. We'll shrink down our work comp area. Let's shrink it down to three seconds. And let's hit zero for the RAM preview and see what happens. Yeah, nice and big and epic. So there's a couple of things. Um, one is every time you run the RAM preview, it'll play the sound. You can always toggle it on and off, much like an eyeball. Here on the side, we'll toggle the visuals. For example, here's our Ninja Gator JPEG. We can turn it on and off, just like in Photoshop. And we can do that as well with our imperf intro perfect wave. Let's uh, turn it off for now. We'll just work with the visuals. Right there. So one thing I want to point out is, uh, let's go back to our example movie. And there's a nice little subtle lead-in. You can see as Ninja Gator pops in, it kind of settles into its position. It's kind of nice and slight in versus what we have right now, which is kind of mechanical which is kind of our and it just stops there. We want to ease in and ease out. It's a, in, in animation terms, it's a squash and settle. This is going to be a settle. We want this to settle as it's going in there versus mechanically going, stop. Um, you have to make that voice, because if not, it just is terrible. But um, there's a hotkey for that. And uh, that system of doing that with After Effects is called ease is a key assistant and you want to ease in and ease out and there's a couple of ways of getting there and there's a couple of methods of using it too but we're just going to use the general one to make this smooth as it goes in there and you can do this with any keyframe which is the cool part and it makes a little bit of a difference sometimes sometimes not but for stuff like changing and animating the position it certainly makes a huge difference so let's highlight this key and we're going to right click on it and go to keyframe assistant easy ease and that's the name of it and once you click on that, you can tell that it's changed icons a bit. And let's do a really quick RAM preview, see if you can see the difference. There, it kind of like slides in versus just popping in. And that's kind of cool. It's not, it's really subtle. It makes a difference a little bit later, or when you have a lot of motion and you want it to look a little bit more natural. And uh, let's undo that right quick. And the other alternative is to hit exactly what the, the hotkey was, which is F9. I found out that F9 also turns off your recording on Camtasia, and that's not what I wanted, and I was wondering what was going on. So if you hit F9, hopefully I will not stop Camtasia. And it's still recording, goodness yes. And now we have this nice ease in, ease out. So let's do a quick RAM preview again. Yeah, it looks a bit better. And what else happens in here? So the other thing that's happening is we're animating the opacity 
as that comes in the opacity is changing on that so let's and we've already worked with this but um, we're gonna show we're gonna do a, a split lesson and show you some hotkeys for calling up all these changes that you have um, on this so let's animate the opacity let's go back to this frame that starts the position, the original position over here, and the first hotkey that we're going to go over is the J and the K, or the J. If you hit J on it, J is the on the keyboard is the hotkey for moving to the last, to the previous keyframe, wherever you are on your time on your timeline with your scrubber. If you hit J, it'll go to this key automatically, and then the K goes to the one ahead of it. So regardless of where you are here, you can hit K, and it moves to that keyframe. And those are old video editing standards that are really cool. Um, you know, just hitting J and K, and it really helps get everything perfect and lined up. So right over here is, uh, let's animate our opacity first at this last keyframe. Let's turn on the stopwatch, and that sets a keyframe right here, and it's at 100%. Now let's hit J and go to the previous keyframe. Let's change the opacity to zero, and now we have this fade in as it's moving in with Ninja Gator. But that, let's clean it up just a hair more. Let's do a quick RAM preview. And it's not as subtle as we'd like. So let's make a quick adjustment and we'll move this to the, let's say, one second line. You can move it precisely, but I guesstimated pretty well. So let's hit zero, see what that looks like. Yeah, that's more, that's more appropriate. It looks like it's kind of like cool and fading in, a little bit more dynamic. Do another RAM preview right quick. Bam. Good deal for that. So let's go over a really quick, another shortcut that's really, really helpful. And um, that are the hotkeys for picking out the transformations that you've animated on your layers. And the big four, if we troll down this menu, let's, let's do it right here on this text. And we're going to ignore this text for now. The big, the big transforms, with the exception of the anchor point, which is up there, is position, scale, rotation, and opacity. And these all have hotkeys to get to them, to reach them easily. So if you have a layer selected and you hit uh, P for position, it pops up automatically. Um, oh, let's do the opacity, which is the weird one with the T. We've been working with opacity position. Uh, we're going to be wor we've worked with scale before, so S for that and R for rotation. So the big four are scale, rotation, opacity, which is a T, and then P for position. You're going to be animating those a whole heck of a lot in motion graphics and also in, in uh, After Effects as well. And here's another really cool shortcut. Remember that on this Team Ninja Gator text that we have, we've animated both the position and the opacity. If you have a layer selected and everything's twirled down, for example, and we click on our T, anything that's been animated or has a keyframe on it, you can hit U, and U will drop down all the properties that's been animated for that. It's very, very helpful, and it's, a, it's an amazing, really quick hotkey that everyone should learn. Everyone should learn. Everyone, including people that have never seen this program. Um, I don't know what that joke was going for, but it was really mediocre. 